Hello. Hi, Lori. Yes. Hey, this is Tommy, and we are live. Hey, how you doing? I am great. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. I'm sitting in my living room decorating for Halloween, of all things. Really? Nice. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's, it's great. Oh, that is so awesome. Thank you so much uh, for taking the time to do this interview. Um, to me, you're like the most underappreciated scream queen of all time. Oh, that's so sweet of you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, I was looking over your credits. One of the first things you did uh, was an episode of Charlie's Angels. That was the very first thing that I did. Yeah. And it was when I first came up to Hollywood, and I had, I was so, I didn't know anything. And um, they sent me on this interview, and um, and I just, I didn't even know that there was a callback process or any of that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, I came over from Catalina Island, if, if you know where that is. It's, yeah. It's 22 miles across the sea in, in uh uh, from Long Beach and so I was really like naive and so uh, I finally you know they, they had to really walk me through it and go well you know I said I know you got a call back it's like well what's a call back so I finally went and I got the job and you know I think it was then it was Kate Jackson and Cheryl Ladd and right. Jacqueline Smith and I thought, oh, wow, well, they, they seem so, like, on television, they seem so great and nice, and I bet you they're friendly and all this stuff. And they were great and everything, but not exactly what I thought. I learned a big lesson. Uh, they didn't want to really hang out with the rest of the gals, so to speak. Yeah. So, uh, that was kind of my uh, entrance into the Hollywood show business. You yeah. know? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's it's so disappointing when you meet your idols. Sometimes I've been lucky. I've only had maybe at least two experiences that way. But for the most part, they have been very sweet and humble. Yeah, this was not the case. Um, but the, you know, they were they were professional and all of that. But you know, there was a difference between what they did and everybody else did. Right. But it was a good lesson for me because it. it gave me an idea of what I was signing up for as far as, you know, my career. Right. And, so, and, sometimes, yeah. and sometimes there's an instance where, like, their agents and their managers, like, tell them not to uh, talk to anybody but the stars. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, but it was, you know, it was great. Otherwise, I worked with other really great co-star stuff. And so it was, it was fine. But it was it was a real learning experience for me. And you played like a Catholic school girl? Something like that. I think I was a liar, which I thought I it cracked me up. <laughs> I, was like, I, I could I could do this. I was young. I was like, oh, I know how to do this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. And then of course, uh, you did Bloody Birthday, which is where I fell in love with you. Aw, thanks. Thank you. That was a great film. It was all the horror films that I worked on were really fun. You know, because uh, they were low budget. Mm -hmm. uh, there were not a lot of takes, and um, it was really you know you, you the shooting schedule was um, you know I I did a horror film I think in ten days. Mm -hmm. it just you know. And if, if the microphone was in the shot, they'd somehow try and cut around it, but they couldn't do another take. It was it was like that in the 80s. Yeah. You know, so uh, not at all like it is now, but it was it was fun. It was really fun. Yeah, you're so sweet and caring as Joyce. I, I just really love that performance. And it's like a slasher version of, um, what's that movie? Village from Village of the Damned. Oh really? I haven't seen that, but wow! I'll have to check it out. Yeah, it's about these. It's a, it's a, it's a British horror film from the '60s about these kids who like shoot like lights from their eyes and they terrorize a whole town. And it just kind of reminded me of that, but in slasher form. That's <laughs> now. I'm telling you, this movie, that movie, Bloody Birthday, could never be 
never be made today. No. beyond her years in that rule? Yeah. Yeah, I ran into her at a restaurant, like I would say about 10 years ago, and she came up to me, and she was grown up by then. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't recognize her. She came up and she goes, did she do a film called Bloody Birthday? I'm like, yeah. And she goes, I was in it. And it, she was adorable. As cute as she was back then, she grew up to be a, a, a beautiful young lady. Oh, I'm glad. Yeah. Everybody remembers her from the Blues Brothers. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think she's got kids and everything now. I'm not sure what she's doing, but, you know, it was great. It was That moment was great. Because you always kind of wonder, oh, what happened to her? Yeah, I was, I was kind of searching for her on Facebook recently. I couldn't find her. She's probably under her married name or something. Could be, yeah. 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 And, um... This came out during the whole, the whole, the whole holiday-themed slasher craze. Friday the Thirteenth, Halloween, My Bloody Valentine, Happy Birthday right. to Me. Yeah, all all these like crazy slasher movies. But this was so bold that they'd have you know these kids kill these adults. I know, I know. right? Yeah. But it, you know, it was the sign of the time that you know it, it was more innocent back then. You know, back then, yeah. clearly no one would ever do that, you know, or the kids would never be that that evil. So it was it was kind of just fun and games, but now I don't think that would be the case as far as, you know, it just too many restrictions. Yeah. Yeah. I love the scene where um, the, uh, the boys are, are paying her to look through the peephole when Julie Brown is changing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me and my friends, we used to do that when we were kids. Of course, all guys did. Yeah, you know, was, that's what they did. Instead of you know, it was like it was usually younger brothers of older sisters with their friends and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Except there wasn't. We we didn't have money though. We had bubble gum. <laughs> right. Bazooka. Yeah, bazooka or like you know, Tosh baseball cards gum. Oh yeah, yeah, that's great. Good for you guys. <laughs> yeah. It's all it's all a part of growing up, man. It sure is. I I, lo I love when uh, you inform her about the whole, and you got the smile on this face, like, oh, kids do the darndest things. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. She was really fun to work with. She was a nice lady. Oh yeah, I used to. It was, before, I, it was it, before she became, you know, MTV. Julie Brown. Yeah. Um, but she was, you know, we were all just trying to, you know, do work, and it was fun. It was, it was a nice time back then. Mm hmm. I know it. it just it. I watched it last night. It'd been a while since I'd seen it, and I'd noticed, God, there was such a like a um, an innocent quality to it that's just lacking today. Yeah. That's for sure, but you know, there's some great films being made today too, but there is a certain innocence about it, um, because it was, you know, it was, there's just, um, yeah, it was, it, 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 things weren't as closely watched because there was, you know, I mean, the, the main thing with the kids is that they just had to have a teacher on set, that was it. Right. Everything else, there was no question about it. Right. Yeah. And there's such a great cast. Uh, Joe Penny from Jake and the Fat Man. Yep. Michael Dudikoff, Cyril O'Reilly, Billy Jacoby, yeah. Susan Strasberg, uh, Jose Ferrer, Ellen Gear. Yep. I mean, that's yep. a great cast. I know. I know. Michael Dudikoff and I um, had been in acting class together, so we knew each other. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have really too many scenes with him, but he was he was a really nice guy. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Cyril O'Reilly was in it, and he was great. And um, yeah, it was just nice. What was uh, Susan Strasberg like? Um, she was nice enough, as I remember. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, 
as I remember, yeah. She was she was just fine. Mm-hmm. I thought she was I thought she was great in the movie. But you know, she she had a very famous dad, a very famous acting teacher dad. Yep. And uh I always wondered, I thought, God, that must be hard. Yeah. But, um, you know, she was great. She showed up, did her work, and went home. That's awesome. And uh, yeah. according to IMDb, you did all your own stunts? Yeah. You know, it was, it was <laughs> back then it was like, they go, well, you know, do you think you can do that? And I was like, okay. You know, I was not... I, you know, I was always kind of a tomboy. Uh-huh. So when they said, oh, well, can you do this and then trip and do this? And I would be like, okay. I, I was excited, you know, because a lot of times with films, you're kind of waiting around. And yeah. So anytime I had a chance to move around or do something fun, and to me that was fun, um, I'd say, yeah, sure. So they were happy. I was happy. So it all worked out really well. And, of course, do, yeah, do some exercises and some stretches beforehand so you don't injure yourself? <laughs> Not really. Oh. I don't know. No, that was, I, I, didn't, I didn't have enough, I didn't have enough sense back then to do stuff like that. I just, I just went for it, you know. You know, it was, it, it, it's another thing. Back then, it was like, you know, they were, if, if I really thought I could do it, I would tell them, and they would have gotten a stunt double. But for the most part, it was it seemed pretty easy. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know. And uh, yeah. there was going to be a sequel, but it never happened? I don't know. I never heard about that. I never heard about that. Was that true? It said on the IMDb that... Uh, there was going to be a continuation, but because the film wasn't a huge success, it never happened. Oh, God. Well, yeah. I mean, back then, you know, it's like if you if your film was out for like a week, that was pretty good. Because there was a lot of really low-budget films back then. Yeah. You know, it, there was the ones that were successful, and then the ones that kind of slipped by the wayside, like this one, that gained popularity over the years because it was kind of cheesy, you know? Um... So, yeah. And then uh, you did uh, The Day After, which is like one of the top five most successful TV movies of all time. Yeah, that was that was a lot of fun to work on, too. It was it was eye opening. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, it was um, that was an interesting film to work on. A, a great, another great cast: Jason Robarts, Joe Beth Williams, oh, Steve Guttenberg, John Lithgow, Bibby Besh, yeah. uh, Amy Madigan. How long was the yep. shoot? Um, I think it was. I know it was. I know. I think it was about a month to six weeks. Oh. My part. Mm-hmm. And ooh, in Kansas. I think we were in, in throughout Topeka and Lawrence and all around Kansas um, in that area. And um, because it was, it was a, it, you know, it was a big undertaking for the director. Mm-hmm. And um, we basically worked on a farm. It was a pig farm. We worked in pig farm. <laughs> <laughs> in the summertime when it was real smelly. But you know what? It was it was fun, and uh, most of my work was done in the basement and on the farm, and um, it was really it, I, it was such a um, a great movie to work on. And the whole cast was great to work with. Oh yeah, I mean I was in very close quarters with BB Bash and John Collins and um, John Collum and um, Steve Gutenberg. And yeah. then the two kids, Doug Scott, and I can't remember the other little girl's name. But, um, uh, yeah. Yeah, we were basically down in the basement for most of the time. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. And, but uh, a, few, a few years before um, you had done Happy Birthday, you did The Prey, which came out like six years later. Oh, I know. Yeah, that was my first horror film. Right. And uh, that was the one that was shot in, like, nine or ten days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which it kind of looks like. And, uh, 
fans that have never seen it to watch it and they ask me what it what it is i say it's a cross between friday the 13th and the hills have eyes with all the rustic locations and all that oh yeah uh, yeah right and uh yeah yeah we just stayed up there and at night we'd go shoot and, and uh run around and you know all bloody and it was it was great yes the only time a psychopath went through the trouble of killing people just so he could have some romance i know i know, I know. it was but yeah that was that was really and that's when i really got uh, a good idea of how horror films uh were made and how they Uh, Jackie Coogan's last movie. Oh, I didn't get to work with him um, that I remember. I mm. think he was in separate scenes. I, lo- I love the scene where uh, Bobby doesn't want to put out. All right. Yes. And I, and I have to say, Lori, you are quite a lady. Oh, thank you. I sure appreciate that. Yes, we, 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 we get a little uh, glimpse of your nipple in that scene and <laughs> have to say you are quite a lady. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, you did an episode of the short-lived um, Starman series. Yep. Did, did you know a cinematographer on, on the show named Michael O'Shea? You know, that doesn't sound familiar. Um, why do you ask? That's uh, my great uncle. Oh wow! Did he shoot that? Did he shoot the episode I was in? He he sh- he shot every episode until it ended. Wow. Well, he must have been a good cinematographer, you know. Yeah. Because I know the episode I did. It was all uh, in through I think Vegas, mm-hmm. and that's not an easy location to work in. So he must have been good. Yeah. He. Um he died um, in 1995. He was shooting a um, music video for Meatloaf, and um, he uh, crashed uh, in an airplane. Sadly. Uh, that's. I'm sorry. God dang. Yeah. I I never that's, got I never that, got to meet him too. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's um. It, it, it's risky. Mhm. Yeah. Well, I interviewed. I interviewed uh, Spice Williams, the stunt woman, and uh, she actually worked on that video, and she actually saw the plane crash, and she was really devastated because she was uh, good friends with him. Oh, yeah, I can't even imagine how that must have been for the people there. Mm-hmm. You know, that's um, sorry to hear about that. Oh, thank yeah. you. So, what, so what was that experience like uh, shooting that episode? Uh, Starman? Uh, Starman, yeah. Yeah, it was it was great. Um, the cast was great, um, and it was, you know, it was, the episodic television is um, not like shooting horror films, obviously, because it's not on a low budget, and so everything takes a little bit longer, but uh, the budget's bigger, so it, it, it's pretty much paint by numbers. Yeah. You know, everybody has their own style of how they shoot, and but, but they have people that keep you on time. And yeah, it's like a well-oiled machine. Real different from um, from horror films. Mm-hmm. And uh, I met Robert Hayes last year at a horror convention, and mm-hmm. very nice man. 
uh, I wanted to ask him questions about his career, but he kept asking me questions, and I was just overwhelmed by it. It was so cool. Yeah, he, he was, he's a good guy. Yeah. You know? um, just, he seemed like just kind of like a normal guy. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, he's very um, down-to-earth. Yeah. And, yeah, so uh, I could understand why it probably shocked you, because, you know, I don't know, I've never been to the convention, but mm-hmm. I'm sure that there's a lot of people who are there, that, you know, the people that are the stars, so to speak, that, you know, just want to sign an autograph and get you off to, you know, get the next one in. So when you meet somebody like that, I'm sure it's awesome. Well, yeah, I mean, I go to conventions quite frequently, and then, um, you know, there'll, there'll be the, the celebrities who have lines that are, like, out the door, and those are the, usually the ones who want to sign your autograph and send you on your way for obvious reasons. But but then there's uh, the ones like him, who uh, his line is not busy, and, yeah, I had a nice conversation with him. It was really cool. That's neat. That's so cool. Uh, but, you, but you never get invited to horror conventions? I never got into it. And, um, no. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I have a lot of fun at them. I just, I, I love telling the movie stars I grew up watching how much they mean to me. It's just so gratifying. Uh, yeah, I can see that. I know, I mean, I know uh, a lot of people that do go, mm-hmm. um, that just go to conventions. Um, I have a friend, Robert Robert Romanus, who played. I love him. Demone. Yeah. Demone, yeah. He's a good guy. I do. I do a really good impression of him. Huh? I do a really good impression of him. Let's hear it. I don't know what happened. Suddenly, I woke up in a good mood. <laughs> Did that translate well over the phone? Pretty good. Thank you. Thank you. You know what? He's and he talks like that in life. I know. You know we were pals, and he, you know, and because our kids went to school together, and he go, you know, why don't you come over for a nice cup of coffee? You know, and, and it would be like, oh my God, you're like that in real life. <laughs> you know? Yeah. He's a good guy, though. Yeah, I, I haven't met him. We have a mutual friend. Do, do you know uh, Kelly Maroney? I don't. Yeah, he worked with her on Fast Times at Ridgemont High. She played the blonde cheerleader in the movie. And, right. uh, and um, he was on the, the podcast that she co-hosts. And um, yeah. the host asked asked him um, if, if um, the, the scene where Jeff or Jason Lee takes his virginity was the only um, sex scene he's ever had. And he said, he said, yeah, a couple, a couple years later, I played Natalie's boyfriend on The Facts of Life. I took her virginity, but it's a good thing we didn't see that. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. I was oh, howling. God. Yeah, I was howling. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's a good guy. What were you saying, though? Uh, he does conventions? Yeah. Yeah, he does. Yeah, and, and and he's, you know, I think he does really well at Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hopefully I'll meet him one day at one. I hope so. I hope so. And then um, you did Return to Horror High. I love that movie. Thank you. That, that was fun. To, to me, the Wayans Brothers owes the, the, this movie a lot of residuals because of Scary Movie. They, they're so f- similar. <laughs> It was it was it, it was the first time that I think that I they mixed comedy with horror and it was just it was so much fun to make especially um, oh my god what was it? Alex Rocco oh, oh yeah he, he was hysterical yeah he was one of the greats oh yeah he, he, he you just couldn't even get through a scene with him. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, I just I had that that movie was a real highlight. I had a ball on that film. It was just so much fun. What was uh George, what was George Clooney like back then? You know what? He's, he was nice. He was a good guy. He was funny. Mm-hmm. You know, he was trying to make ends meet, and 
we all were, and you know, we just we just had a good time. Mm-hmm. Did, uh, did you have? Did you see any indication that he was going to become a huge star? Not really. I mean, he was good looking. <laughs> of course. But, but, but he was just, but more than that, he was fun. Mm-hmm. Just, he was a nice man, uh, or a young man back then. Yeah. You know? So, uh, yeah. But I didn't know. You know, we didn't, we didn't really think about that kind of stuff. We were just there and trying to get through the work and all of that. And, mm-hmm. and you know, get, make the day as far as the shooting schedule because... Moments and horror films where, you know, the schedule had to go much quicker. Yeah. Uh, you know, so you become close to people in a very short amount of time, whoever you're working with. Mm-hmm. And uh, I didn't work with him that much, but the day or two that I did, he just seemed like a good guy. Nice. Yeah. And Vince Edwards, who played Ben Casey, was in it? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's cranky. I've heard he's very cranky. He was cranky. You know, it's just like, okay, let's get to the seat. He's cranky. Yeah. He, he was in a movie uh, a few years before it called Deal of the Century with Chevy Chase. And it was uh-huh. and it was directed by William Friedkin. I, yeah. I never hear any of them talk about that movie. They must have been at each other's throats 24-7. They all have reputations for being cranky. Oh, my God. I mean, you know, there's always one. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. I can't imagine a room full of cranky. Because there's always one that's on a step that's difficult, you know? Right. And you just kind of like, oh, whatever, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but if it was three in, you know, in power, <laughs> positions of power, that would be tough. Yeah. What was Christy Summers like? Chris, now, who's, which one is she? Oh, God, I can't for the life of me remember her name in the movie. She was, Summers. She was blonde. She was she was on a lot of TV shows back in the 80s. My God, I can't think of who that is. Yeah, I can't, I can't think of her, her character's name right now. Yeah. Uh, we both... <laughs> Oh, yes, Maureen McCormick, who played Marsha Brady. Yeah, she was fun. She was great. She was having a good time, because it was so out of character for her. She got into it. It was great. Oh, yeah. I mean, she yeah. she must have been having a blast, because she, she's like, yeah. I'm not playing Marsha. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to say the F word, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, she, was, she had fun. Um, but everybody, again, you know, because we were all trying to make the days and stuff, we just, you know, everybody got along you had to mm-hmm. yeah you had to get the work done yeah I, lo- I love like all the movies that New World Pictures made all the low budget movies yeah. especially especially after Roger Corman had sold the company before that and stuff mm-hmm. because I don't know they, they, they had this this clever idea of casting people who were like who were like uh B movie stars who used to be A stars, or A or A stars who was like you know who like um, was trying was was try uh, how how should I say this trying to get trying to get work to fill in the gaps you know before they go do an A movie you know right right that that was a, right. a genius idea that you don't see anymore I know well that was a yeah but like I said the don't see, you know, there was a lot of people that were, you know, like Jackie Coogan and like, uh, you know, the Ben Casey guy. And God, I did a film, I think in The Prey, there was Troy Donahue. Mm-hmm. Was it Troy Donahue? He was a big, huge star. Troy Donahue, was he in that? I'm pretty sure he was. Huh. I have to go back and watch it again. Yeah, there was someone that had been really, like, popular. And, you know, it's like you're there doing a low-budget feature, but they just wanted to keep working. It just didn't matter. They just wanted to work. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that was, that was a good platform for, like you're saying, 
So he said they just, you know, fill in until something else came up. Right. So at uh, what point did you decide that you were going to leave the movie business? When I had my son. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. So it, it was it was pretty easy, you know, decision. So that was that. Was that. I, I spent, you know, 10, 11 good years in the business working. Mm-hmm. And then I was ready to do something else. And, uh, did, didn't you, like, go into, like, psychology or something? Mm-hmm. I did. Yeah. And, and, and... Yeah, and I was working up until about six months ago, and now I'm taking care of family members that are not doing so good. So I'm, oh. that's what I'm doing right now. I'm giving back. Oh, bless your heart. I really, I really um, admire that. Thank you. It's, uh, it's... It's a, a life experience that I would never miss, you know. And I'm, yeah. con- <clears throat> you know, I mean, I'm, I'm content right now doing it because it, you know, it's, it's just giving back. It's, it's a good thing because I was given so much, you know, and, mm-hmm. and so that's, that's what's going on. So that's what I'm doing. Yeah, I was, I took care of my grandmother for nine months after I graduated high school. And I, I took care of her yeah. until she died, and Aww. it was it was devastating. But I, I I lived through it, and I've lived through even worse since then. I had a car accident two years ago. Oh, you okay? Yeah, uh, my my leg my leg was broken seven places. I had a mild heart attack. I I, I was in a coma. I mean, it was oh my god bad. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Well, I'm glad that you're talking to me today because that that's a lot of a lot of trauma. Yeah, it, it was an experience I don't want to live through again. I I only remember a small amount of it too. You know, that's interesting what our brain does. Mm-hmm. Especially uh, especially when there's alcohol involved. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. 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 That's for sure. Well, I'm glad you're okay. Thank you so much. It's I'm I'm living my dream, trying to make it happen. You know, I've been doing comedy for 11 years, and I've and oh, I've good. and I act a little bit, and I've been doing I've been doing this podcast in my bedroom since May, and it's going really good. Well, that's awesome. Good for you. I, I wish you continued success. Thank you so much. I I hope um, I hope. I hope eventually uh, somebody invites you to a convention and you decide to go because I would love to meet you. Okay, well, you know what? <laughs> if I do go, uh, mm-hmm. you know, find me and introduce yourself and, and that would be great. Maybe we'll have a nice cup of coffee. <laughs> oh, that would be awesome. I, I, I mean, I go to Los Angeles quite frequently um, uh-huh. for conventions or or uh, business related things and I'm planning on moving there hopefully sometime next oh. year and stuff. Oh good. Save up money. Yeah. Expensive here. Yeah. Save up your money. Yeah. Well my mom's gonna be retiring so she's coming with me. Oh good. Gotta love mom. Yeah. Absolutely. That's great. Laurie, thank you so much for taking the time today to talk to me. You're so welcome. It was a pleasure, and I hope to see you and meet you someday in the near future. I hope so, too. So. Okay. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.